what's going on my homies? We are at beautiful Smith Lake right here and I think you can see it behind me. There's a boat behind me. So I've talked to you guys a little bit about it. I'm actually looking for a new boat. I don't know if it's gonna happen this year. I don't know if it's gonna happen next year. And the biggest part about it is I don't know what kind of boat I'm gonna get, what brand, what style. And I don't know how you guys operate, but one of the ways that I shop and probably primarily the way I shop is I look for reviews. Whether I'm going on Tackle Warehouse or if I'm going on Amazon, I'm gonna look at the price point, I'm gonna look at the product and the specs, and I'm gonna go to the reviews and see what people have to say about it. Cause I really believe people are the best people at telling, or are the best sources of, of talking about a product, telling you what their experience is with it, how it works. So what we're gonna do today, and I wanna do more of these videos cause I think it's gonna be pretty cool. I got my buddy Tyler Wilcott back there. He is an ML, MLF pro circuit angler and a good buddy. Me and him have been friends for quite a few years now. He's a Florida guy, super cool dude. Tyler, where can they get you on Instagram, dude? Just my first and last name, Tyler Wolcott. It's gonna be the same on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Tyler's super good people, follow him on the pro circuit, but we're actually gonna use Tyler for his experience kind of on the pro circuit. What we're gonna do is we have a Blazer 650 Pro Tour behind me. It's Tyler's tournament boat, but I wanna get his honest opinion of how the boat works, what he likes about it, how it fishes, you know, what he thinks of it because I'm on the hunt for the perfect bass boat for balls, the balls bass boat. So let's get to it. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Go follow Tyler. I'll drop a link to his um, social media down in the description box. Let's get after it. Tyler, 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 where do you want to start, dude? We're outside the boat. Number one, I kind of love your raft, dude. This is pimp, dude. But why don't you tell me a little bit about the boat? Tell me kind of in general what she is. So this boat is a, it's a 21 foot model boat. Um, Blazer makes a 625, which is like a 20 foot model. It's, it's the same layout generally, but they made this 650 Pro Tour a little bit wider and a little bit longer. So I'll explain some of that when we get up there into the decking. It has sort of a different layout, which gives a lot more space for the trolling motor in that. What other benefits, or does this have something to do with the way the boat actually cuts the waves in that? To be oh no, <laughs> to be completely honest, I'm not like a boat haul guru. Like I, okay, I, I'm I couldn't tell you like the exact specs on how everything's made, but something Blazer has done, they figured out they could make a performance boat that's super fast handles really well and can just handle that those those chops in the rough water extremely well with however however that's laid out down there i'm not going to sit here and, ex and try to explain something i don't know about but but the all, gist of it is it it rides pretty clean yeah, like it, you're saying so it's pretty smooth I, i'm going to throw this out there and you can be honest but i've ridden in a phoenix and a phoenix has been the cleanest riding boat that i've been in how mm -hmm. does it compare to that i haven't ridden in a ton of phoenixes but i've had people that have hopped in my boat that either own phoenixes or have been in a bunch of phoenixes and they didn't like say that this boat is crazy better but they say that this boat handles is one of the best handling boats they've ever been in so that's not even coming from me that's coming from other people that have been in this boat so that says a lot uh right there about how this boat actually rides a lot of times with clean riding boats mm -hmm. you get a much higher gunnel and I noticed on this guy, like there is practically, I'd say like an inch and a half, like two inches, which I actually really like. Mm -hmm. Have you had any issues with things bouncing out or do you like this lower kind of gunnel deal? I guess it all comes down to how organized you are. I like to stay organized up here. I'm not gonna say I'm a Brian Thrift or anything, but I like to keep my rods, you know, laid down flat. I don't stack them up or anything. So I've never actually come into contact with anything falling over the edge, but, um, that's kind of sweet though, because I oftentimes I'll hit tungsten on my trut and the gunnels are a little yeah. bit higher and I'll hit tungsten or hit a bait and do stupid stuff. Kind of cool fenders right here. And actually we can hit on the motor too. You have a, is that a Mercury? Mercury what, what do you got? Mercury Pro XS four stroke. It's super popular motor. At um, 250? 250. What yep. are we talking about with um, speeds on this guy? Uh, speeds around between 70 and uh, there's some people that run them up there near the 80s. It all depends on which prop you're running, whether you want it to be a performance-based prop, like say whole shot or just handleability, or if you want just speed, you gotta run completely different things. But I run a prop that just does a little bit of everything. This is a four blade, 28 pitch Bravo. It's super good, uh, like super good whole shot um, when I'm in rough water, just need to, just the boat needs to handle really well. 
this prop gives me that and it also gives me a good amount of speed plenty enough speed that I, I need so if i'm not a speed demon and i'm somebody who wants control and just general performance and pretty much safety i'm mm -hmm. kind of a ninny when it comes to running boats is that the prop that i want to look at like that, a that's blade? a really good prop anything these these boats they like a little bit bigger of a prop than say a phoenix or something like that but this 28 pitch bravo seems to be that sweet spot with these um the blazer guys have recommended it and a bunch of other people that run the blazers recommended it so that's the prop we got on here and seems to be good for me let me ask you a question that and it's probably going to sound kind of stupid some of you guys might already know what is this actually for i know it's an outboard cover and that but is it for to keep the motor warm or is it to just protect the cowling so there's a bunch of different things i have this on here for a lot of times they say when we're traveling uh depending on what part of the country and the bugs get really bad it's kind of like the same thing with like the bumper of your vehicle uh the bugs will get like yep. here and it's almost impossible sometimes especially if you're traveling and don't have the, the means to clean a motor it's like almost impossible to get those bugs off so that's one of the reasons and then sometimes i'm being from florida sometimes we go to some weird places where i, I want to go up shallow and there's trees and all kinds of stuff and i sell a lot of these i sell i try to sell the boat every year and if i have a bunch of scratches and yeah, things dude. on the motor this thing right here is a good good investment just to have on there just to protect it so. i never thought about that because the cowlings are actually really expensive to replace yeah. when you when you look them up that's mm -hmm. nuts so let's do another thing too we got so you got double poles on here i think that's kind of a given with any you know kind of tournament level bass boat mm -hmm. uh, in the back though why don't we crack this thing open because i want you to tell me a little bit about you have a power pole charge back there don't you i do so i want you to tell me about this because power management has been a struggle for me you know running multiple graphs and that iod lithiums just like tyler does but tell me a little bit about how this power pole charge works and what it does be all right full disclosure we're about to go fishing we're here on smith lake Tyler didn't plug in his boat before we left my house. Didn't have it plugged in the day before. And I'm like, hey, Tyler, is that going to be a problem? He's like, don't worry about it. I know exactly how much my stuff is charged. So take it from there. Tell me a little bit about how this works. Yeah, that actually is a funny story because I, when I was packing up the boat this morning, I was thinking about that in the back of my head. And I had looked at my, I was like, ah, I'm sure it'd be fine. But I went and looked at the percentages anyways, and everything's fully charged. And I hadn't plugged my boat in since the last time I was fishing. So pretty funny um so i got a power pole charge battery management system in here and it's absolute game changer um as y'all know whether depending on the time of year how you're fishing we run these troll motors really really hard and sometimes you're left out there stranded and can't can't do any more troll motor fishing because you just kill these batteries so fast and um i've fished two days now i can remember i haven't even plugged my batteries in and i still have full charge and i did idle around a good bit but that's still i still did a good amount of fishing too so it's pretty cool it just shows the strength of what that power pull charge does because the uh, general concept is it, it it works as an alternator off your motor yeah. right like so it pulls energy off your motor while you're running and drip charges it back into the battery so you're literally on a on a circular charge all the time not only is your cranking battery charging but your trolling motor batteries are charging and, and tyler hit it right on the head we have electronic trolling motors other than the head being powered the steering's powered now I and mean, as we go into the inside of the boat we got two graphs on front you know one for active target one for sonar and mapping two graphs on the back we're running so many electronics that man managing power and having enough there oftentimes you can be depleted of power within four or five hours of the day if you're running all your stuff so it can be a super duper headache let's talk a little bit about this layout that this is a little bit different uh sort of what do you call this engine well layout than i've seen on other boats it's wider and sort of taller so all your batteries go in the middle are these gas tanks on each side yeah so what blazer does has done these are like i said before blazer is like a performance bass boat company uh I think they're they're mostly known for being a speed boat, but I think what people are starting to figure out is with a heavy boat like some of these other manufacturers, it's almost like makes it worse in rough water because that bow is everything's just so heavy it's hard to control it. And these blazers are absolutely amazing. I'm not gonna sit here and blow blow a blazer just because I run one. I'm just being completely honest here. But when you get in rough water, you want to be able to control your boat, and with this boat how it's set up and how they have the weight of this boat it's being so light you're able to use this 250 mercury back here and just you're able to fully control what your boat does so say you're in rough water you need to keep that bow up you need to 
lift it and drop it and lift it and drop it, you're able to do that because the boat's light and this motor's strong, so you just have a lot more maneuverability. But going back here, what Blazer has done is they, they've split the gas tanks up. So this is 25 gallons and that's 25 gallons. So the weight displacement is, it's divided along the edges of the boat, which gives that, makes that weight a little bit more dispersed. And what you can do, there's a switch back here. You can have it on a setting where it pulls from both evenly, or you could suck it out of one tank. So say I'm fishing by myself, all the weight of the boat when I'm driving is gonna be on this right side. Yeah. I wanna suck the gas out of this right side to make right. the boat a little bit more even. They're so, almost like trim tabs inside the boat yeah, a little so bit, it, yeah. It just makes it a little bit more easy to manage the weight, how it's in here, and it's just a, so one thing that's kind of cool i want to kind of come back to this because one i used to have many years ago a little boat that had twin gas tanks and it was the biggest headache ever because you'd run out of gas you'd have to switch repump so you can actually draw out of both gas mm -hmm. tanks consecutively and will can you fill both gas tanks at the same time or are there two separate fill no stations? There's, there's two different two fill separate holes. fill but you yep. can draw from both so you're never letting fuel sit in there if you don't want to like forever and ever and yep. ever that's pretty cool. So let's talk about your the front of the boat setup, and then we're gonna do a little bit on storage. Your setup is very comparable to what I have on my Triton, but a little bit different. So tell me a little bit, I kind of like the way you got your graph mount set up. They're a little bit higher. What mount is that, first of all? So this is a Boat Logics dual bow mount. Um, what they've done is they've, they have two different, basically pivoting points here on the mount. You can adjust it up or down or sideways or all different types of different ways to get these graphs exactly where you want them. And it's pretty cool. I have them, I have it lifted up right now and I have it to where if I'm sitting right here on the troll motor, the graphs are just sitting right above where my foot is and I got a perfect clear view of these graphs. So it's pretty cool. Do you do your setup the same as mine where you have your active target here and that like separated? You use one full graph yeah. just for your active target? Yep. Okay, so you have the ghost on here as well. And what is what is all this fancy stuff? I've actually never seen that. I actually just put this on the other day. It's just a little traction pad. Like, you know, we're fishing out there. It's really hot. I like to fish barefoot a lot because I, I wear flip-flops, but I don't want that weird little flip-flop pants. So I'll fish barefoot. And a lot of times this <laughs> pedal right here being like shiny and black, it'll get really hot. Yeah. So I just put this little comfort pad on there. It looks cool. It'll be comfy on my sensitive feet. And, uh, I love it. This video is becoming a foot fetish video. That's kind of creepy. So you have an active target set up here. Uh, quick question. You, obviously, you're running the Ghost on 36 volt, yep. I assume. Okay, so 36 volt. We'll do a little walk around here. Oh, stair steps. This is actually kind of cool. I've fallen off my boat. Is that a standard feature on the trailer, or is that something that you it's is an add-on? It's a slight add-on, but I don't think it costs too much. I think like around $300 or so is what it costs, but it's super handy. Say you're you're putting the boat or you're taking the boat off the trailer you want to step up i you know unhook it like this we'll just do it unhook it like this take this off Come on. and i just step right here step onto this and get right up in the boat you're not trying to struggle over all your grass or anything it's when you're not slipping it's so full disclosure i hurt my back and i'm like kind of hobbling around a bit I'm going to use that to get in the boat because I try to get in the boat. So if you're injured or you're older, or sometimes when things get wet, I'm not gonna lie, I've actually slipped. Even though this kind of an area is, is a, like a non-slip surface, you'd be amazed if you wax your boat or you spray some kind of solution to make it shiny and beautiful on it, how slippery that can get, especially when it gets wet when you're at the boat ramp and you're sitting there trying to crank the boat on, it can get really unsafe because right below you is all concrete. So that can not always be fun so let's move on into the boat and let's talk a little bit about some of the features inside in the storage i just want to talk about the compartments real quick all these compartments are pretty standard every boat has similar similar compartments i guess i could say but this one right here is pretty cool it's got these slots made into it. it's basically like a day box i just keep the stuff in here i know i'm going to use like this right here is like a square bill box i got my terminal box i got my hook box some frogs it's just some stuff i'm going to have right here where I can sit down right where I am, pick something up that I'm going to use throughout the day, rig it up, and be done with it. So pretty cool box there. Everything else is pretty standard. You know, you got your, your rod locker, huge rod storage. I got that a bunch, is gigantic, dude. I got a bunch of rods in there right now, and Mikey knows I got like, what, 15 rods at the house that 50, yeah. I originally had in here before. So That is storage. crazy deep. And then you got your centage storage. They divide it into two different sections, which yep. is kind of nice, so you can keep your stuff separated. And that goes up, up into their up car, in there. Too. 
And then this guy is just another, it's almost like a half rod locker, right? Yeah, I don't know what's in there, but. Oh, a bunch of clothes. Jackets. I don't think it's gonna packs. rain today, Todd. <laughs> you never know. You never know. So I wanted to ask you, well, actually, let's note this one. I had to put one of those onto my uh, onto my boat, which was kind of annoying. I put a little rack, but I love these tool holders because we, you can attest to it, we just drove on I-65 at, what, 75, 70 miles an hour? We should, probably shouldn't say we're speeding, but 70 miles an hour, and not a single one of those moved. These are the ones, though, I want you to show me. So you have this drawer down here. Show me the, how this thing works, and, like, it's kind of cool. So there's, like, two different, basically, like, little storage day you can put your trinkets or whatever in in this boat but this is a cool one this is like a drawer you know i got my scales i got some random bags of worms some lines some leader my dies in here but this is this box stays completely dry up tucked up under here you can put all kinds of goodies and it's and a lockable drawer too right it's yeah a it's got a little key lock. Lock. that's sweet dude and then you got a little magnet that didn't come with the boat did it no so this is actually just like a little sticky pad uh it's like something i instead of oh. i have these on the ground because sometimes if you put like a jig in here it it'll mess it up out. the yeah. weed guard so i just kind of lay the jigs around but if you have like treble hook baits or anything with like a, a exposed hook you can hang it in here and it won't be on the floor so that's a little tyler that's an awesome little mod dude it's, i never thought about that it's ripped off i've, I've torn it up because i've like caught myself on the hooks and yeah. everything but it was a bass shape but yeah, yeah it's just it's, it's instead of it having like a magnet it's just like a little sticky pad cool so, little add-on let's take a look at this is the other little storage area that i really liked is this this little glove compartment i've been on a lot of boats with other people and oftentimes it's this shared space right here everybody puts their phones their keys and all that and you're always kind of like jumbling back and forth trying to grab your stuff but on this boat and something i noticed immediately you have your own little personal glove compartment right there yeah so i'm gonna go back over here real quick i know michael like this this boat has in, there's one inside that little box that we're gonna get uh -huh. to, and there's also one right here. It's got two little oh, USB ports. Dude. So say you're like running a bunch of cameras, or so yeah. the passenger wants to charge their phone, or so what and so forth, they can plug it in there. But there's also one over here in this little box. You got uh, like these are all completely dry. I got some paper towel in here right now, but there's a little USB port right here. You got two of them, and then super deep it goes down into there that's sweet like, i really say, like that say like this deep it's pretty deep that's pretty sweet i noticed that they're pretty old school kind of toggle switches down there and at first i was like yeah that's kind of old school or whatever but then i kind of thought about it and i know on some of the new rangers that have the touch pads there there were some issues with them not at first but after a while so why do you have the toggle switches on there and i think i know the answer yeah so blazer used to have a very similar setup but they've just these are a little bit more new school style switches yeah they got lights on the tips, yeah so right? basically now you just flip the switch up my power's off unfortunately you flip the switch up there's a little red thing the light yeah. will come on and that just shows you say your power's on say you want to fill the live oil, you flip it up that light will come on so you want to research auto or manual you flip it on it'll be red when it comes on so super easy switches to use it, it tells you if it's on tells you if it's off and it's also a super reliable switch there's nothing electric in there say like some weird things can go on it's a, it's a hard wired in switch and you know it's always going to work unless if it doesn't work you know exactly what to do to, to fix it you go right back behind there and check make sure everything's connected so just a super reliable switch system i kind of like that dude that, that's pretty sweet so you told me something funny about the seats and and the way they were designed. What what uh what's the deal with these seats, Tyler? So these seats were actually designed kind of they didn't copy them, but they've they got their design base off of like the Corvette seats. So as you can see, it's a super streamlined, fancy looking seat. It looks really good sitting down there in the boat and uh, just just super unique seats. I don't know how else, but you see a lot of these boat seats. They're all the same. They're rounded and they're just general seats but these they uh do something a little special and let's see how mike you like some it's actually really good because i'm telling you dude my back is killing me dude they're actually really kind of comfortable and what's nice too i think in a lot of bass boats sometimes you sit a little too high i like to sit a little bit lower there's probably like i don't know like seven eight inches from like feet to ground and i kind of like this because i'll stretch my feet out like that and i feel a lot more comfortable in the boat than when super elevated but they are kind of comfy and they got your your oh oh bleep handles right there you can see they grab right there that's pretty sweet all right what else you got you got live wells i think this is something that you really like about the boat right yeah so one of my favorite things about these blazer live wells we'll just we'll just look at the size of them real quick i mean those live wells are deep they're wide they're 
whatever you want them to be. You can fit as much That's big bass in there time. as you as you'd like. But uh, the the coolest feature, uh, we do. I do. I fish in Florida, as Mikey said. I, I fish in Florida a lot. Sometimes, depending on the year or whatever, it's it's really hard to take care of those fish. And I also do a lot of guiding. I keep shiners and stuff in here. So it's, you got to have a libel that takes really good care of the fish, no matter what kind they are. And uh, what Blazer has done, they've added like a, it's a recirc, but it adds like a, it's like a bubbler system. So down here, right here above this little day box, there's these little switches and you can tighten them or loosen them depending on how much bubbles you want to put in the water. Oh really? Like you you just, can manually control that? Yep. The tighter you do it, the less air it pumps in there. Uh -huh. and the less you do it, the more bubbles it'll put huh. in there. So you turn that on and it'll, I've never had, unless I've hooked a fish funny, I, I cannot remember in this boat or the last blazer I owned a fish dying just just because. So that's, a I mean, even like the shiners or anything. That, th these levels are awesome. I don't know how else to put it. I notice like stupid things about boats, like little things, but on a lot of live wells, in my opinion, the, the doors and the entry points are way too big. Like for instance, you can open them up and that fish can jump out or it just takes up too much space. Like I don't want them big. These slots are actually pretty small. They're, they're big enough to fit like a 10 pounder, slide them into the well, but he's not gonna go busting out and jumping out and flopping all over because you gotta take him out that, that small little slot. But at the same time, they go way back there and they're pretty spaced out. That's a pretty cool deal. So I'm going to try to shoot a bunch of these videos, sort of snake my way into a couple different boats and, and just get some reviews, get some honest feedback on them. I am in the hunt for the boat. So drop down in the comments box if you have a boat that you'd recommend me checking out. But Tyler, thank you. Once again, what model number did we look at today? It's a 650 Pro Tour and one more thing. There's a wrap on this beautiful boat right now. I'm gonna send Mikey a picture of the boat unwrapped so you can see the colors I chose. And nice. That's it. He actually showed it to me and it, it's pretty sweet. It's like this blue, I wouldn't call it Batman, but it, it looks it looks badass, dude. I think you'll dig it. But make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. If you guys got any questions about the boat, I'm probably not the one to ask. This guy is. So where can they find you on social media? Just my first and last name, Mike, you can show right here. Tyler Wolcott, it's on Instagram, That's Facebook, perfect. and YouTube. So. Tyler Wolcott. So Tyler, appreciate it. We are out, we're gonna go try to catch some Smith like bass. Hopefully you'll see a video from it. Like I said, hit that like and subscribe button, support content that you think offers you some kind of value and that you have fun watching. Oh, wait, hope we gotta say hi to Bog. George Boggington. Boggington, Boggington, Boggington. Hey, you wanna go fishing? Get, get. There you go. We out. <laughs>